I was really stressed out when we first got elected. I just felt like I had so much to live yes. up to. And now I'm just like, you know what? It's really just like, it's not as complicated as it seems. It's literally just Agreed. serving other FFA it people. It is. It's like, okay, you need me to come to a workshop? Cool, I'll come to a workshop yes. for you. Like, you need me to do opening ceremonies? Cool, I can do Got opening it. ceremonies for you. If And if there's a little hiccup on the way, we can deal with that too. Yes. Like, there's not, like, it's not as stressful. It's not as daunting as it may seem. It's literally just helping other FFA members yes. and representing other FFA members. Mm-hmm. And, and mine, I had kind of the same thought. Like, I feel like when you're at like not necessarily a higher level of mm-hmm. office but like you have the title of area officer or state officer like it immediately makes you feel i don't know like overwhelmed and yes. i remember like being at state convention and you're like getting off the stage and then they hand us these packets with yes. our area officer contracts and i was like wait i really have to do like a yes. ton of stuff and it really it wasn't about that it wasn't yes. about like how many workshops we were doing mm-hmm. or how many community events we're going to. It was about, you know, doing our jobs as officers and leading others. And I feel like at the beginning of this year, like our main task we talked about in one of these videos was making our area a cold mm-hmm. conference. And like, that was stressful. Yes. But like being able to do that and experience that and having to work in a team environment mm-hmm. where you're having to pull others, push others to, you know, do it so that we have a successful um, workshop. I don't know. I feel like that was a very eye-opening experience mm-hmm. for me and it now that that's kind of cooled off and we're preparing to go to um sldc in the spring like i feel more prepared for yes. that than ever like right. I'm, I'm not stressed that i'm gonna be there and not know what to do and be lost out right. of my mind because now it's like i feel like we've guided the waters of mm-hmm. teamwork and what it means to be an area officer and represent mm-hmm. everyone and then i think another thing is like when i first came into area officer to me like the workshops and playing for the workshops it was work and yes. now it's more over like i can't wait to do this workshop Same. and like i really like when i first did it to me it just kind of felt like a chore a but as i've yeah. met like more people through workshops and i've had so much fun doing workshops i really like doing workshops and it's one of my favorite yes. parts of being an officer period Great. just because like i get to teach people i get to meet new people we get to do all of these like cool activities and i get to see everyone's reaction and so i think i've also found like a lot more joy in just like the work it's not even really yes. work anymore like the stuff that we, we do, do as area mm-hmm. officers and through ffa it's a lot like it makes me just like more happy and it feels less Agreed. like work yeah. than it did when we started just because i have more experience mm-hmm. and i feel more confident in myself and just i kind of found like a deeper meaning to ffa than just a, a title or like an award mm-hmm. and that's my thing like I feel like all my life I'm just like looking for resume builders mm-hmm. and stuff. Yes. And so like yes. I wanted to do area office because like like I liked what I was doing on the officer yes. team here and I wanted to continue that further. But it was also like I did have that incentive of, you know, putting it on a piece yes. of paper because everyone loves to see that you're doing officer mm-hmm. things. And like you were saying, like now I'm very I'm so appreciative that I have done it because me prior to um state conference is a different person than i am today like i truly think that this experience has like pushed me to open new Mm -hmm. doors pushed me Mm -hmm. to have all these new experiences and i don't think i could be more grateful for that yes during okay during the year like i've learned a lot about like how to just prioritize Mm -hmm. so like what's the most pressing matter is it the cold conference is it my midterms like what's going on there Mm -hmm. and then i kind of divide and conquer accordingly Mm -hmm. that's one way I do it and then another thing is to just like talk to like my advisor and kind of like game plan a little bit like okay I have this and then he's like okay we can do this and I can talk to this teacher and go here Mm -hmm. and um I think our teachers are just really good about they put the work out and so if we let them know that we're going to be gone we get it done early yeah that's another thing I've learned one thing that I've definitely applied to my life this year is don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today because if you are like just in a productive mood but yes look at me go (laughs) but like if you are feeling like in a productive mood if you have things coming up try to get those done while you can because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow for example like we went to state ldes the other day and Mm -hmm. i was tired so i was like no i'm not gonna pack my bags i'm gonna well i packed them and then i kind of left things laying around i was like i'll grab them in the morning i ended up forgetting half of my stuff yes I didn't know that I was going to wake up late the next morning. I didn't know that, you know, the horses were going to get out, whatever it may have been. Yeah. If I would have done it the night before, it would have ran much more smoothly. Mm-hmm. And so whenever I have time to do the work, 
I go and do the work in order of priorities, yes. um, in order of mainly deadlines. And in FFA, we really don't have many deadlines, but when we do get them, obviously they're going to be a priority mm -hmm. along with school, of course, and then just working just efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like I definitely had to redirect, rework yes. my mindset in like, FFA is fun. Like, yes, like, I do it because I enjoy it, yes. not just because, like, right. I want to be in one more club. Right. And so, for me, like, when we go on state LDEs, we go on CDE trips, and we're at our area conferences, like, those moments for me are, like, moments of escape where, like, yes. I can implement what I have and what I can contribute and put that towards something that I truly enjoy. And so, like you said, I do also, like, prioritize, okay, what do I have that day? If mm -hmm. I have an essay due that night, I'm going to do it that night but maybe my cult conference deadline aren't right. until the next week. Okay, I'll tackle one thing at a time. Right. Because I think a lot of time, especially in an officer role, and even just being an active participant in a club, like, you really have to recognize that you're doing it for a specific reason. You right. Know, don't take the joy out of your responsibilities. Like, yes. Like, going and being able to speak and meet with people at area conferences, like, to me, that's a privilege. That's a privilege that we have as members of FFA. And so, like, in those moments, I, can, I can't have that mindset of, oh, I'm going to do work today. Like, right. I don't yes. enjoy it. And yes. I feel like if I'm not excited about something, I'm not going to prioritize mm -hmm. it. I'm not going to have it first thing on my plate to do. Yes. And I'm not going to fully put in the effort versus at school, which I know I have to. Yes. One thing, like, is... You can't look at it like work, so whether it be school yes. or FFA. You can't look at it like work. You have to be like, okay, I'm writing an essay. Yes. Like, yes. I'm just going to write. And again, like, Get just it taking it one step at a time. Like, okay, it's just an introductory paragraph. Yep. And the way I tackled our cult conference, because it was a really big, like, stress. <laughs> it was, like, definitely something that we'd never done before. I don't yes. think, like, I think mm -hmm. SK was the only one on our team who'd, like, done something Turner. similar before. Mm -hmm. And so she knew what she was doing. The rest of us were lost. Yep. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, you're just going to do the magic formula. Yes. You're just going to get a list of materials. Mm -hmm. And you can't think of it like, okay, Okay, I've all this work to do because yes. like, it's, it's not that deep. I'm just gonna it's write. I'm, I'm the way I tackled like the magic formula, especially for us, was kind of daunting because again, we'd never really done, done something it. like that before. I think we'd like read over one at AOT, and that was yeah. pretty much it. And so we weren't very experienced with it, and so I had to look through. I was like, okay, it's not big, it's not long, it's not complicated, it's not hard work. I'm just writing what I'm doing. Yes. What am I doing? Okay, write it out. What am I doing? Okay, write it out. And so kind of breaking it up. And again, it's not work. It's something that you do, whether it be to get a good grade or yes. to get something done for an organization that you do like. Okay. The one thing that I admire most. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got me kicking my feet Stop. Stop. Like, Stop. Oh, no. Stop. 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 Okay. Focus. Okay. I think that the... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I sound too formal. Okay, guys. Answer to the question. I think that the one thing that I admire most about JJ is her originality. I think for me, like, especially, like, growing up in a small community with the same group of people, like, I'm used to kind of hearing about the same things every day and, like, you know, going through the motions of talking with people and getting to know them. And, like, for JJ, like, us becoming close this year, there was, a never, there was never a moment where, like, she was trying to be someone else so like for instance like every story that jj tells like goes above and beyond but it's like it's so fitting and like for me i'm like okay this is such like a, a relieving moment to know that like someone is actually experiencing life like someone is doing stuff outside of like the normal conversations that I have every day and so I don't know for me like and I feel like with every person JJ goes and talks to like she's able to create that spark with him because she always brings something interesting to the table like whether it's a story whether it's something about her personality something happening in her life I feel like everything that JJ does is original to her and like no one can take that away from her and she will never ever try to force herself to be someone else just to you know try to fit or try to be more like others because I'm telling you that get, that is not a win in life. And like, truly, I just admire JJ's willingness to, you know, never fail to be herself because I know that is something that I definitely want to work on. So yeah. One thing that I admire about Mimi oh, is like, <laughs> I think the thing that I admire most about Mimi is, so Mimi is one of the most intelligent people that I've ever met in my entire life. She is, she is. She's not gonna say it out loud, but she is. Okay. And um, 
a lot of people think that if you're really smart, you have to like act a certain way. You have to be like nerdy with glasses and like you have to be like quiet. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. Like, but Mimi, like, she doesn't let, like, she doesn't just, like, there's a box people put around nerds. There's, like, a box about, like, Mimi is very, like, she knows a lot of people and she's, like, a friends with everyone. She's very talkative. She's very friendly. She's very social. And she's also, like, she's on cheer and she does a lot of stuff in different clubs. And a lot of people put a box around, like, a cheerleader or they put a box around, like, someone with a 4.0 GPA. But she doesn't let those things, like, define her. Like, she is not, like, while she may be really smart, she's not going to be put into the box of, oh, you're a nerd like you can't be a cheerleader or you can't be like super social or you can't be like we were like at homecoming and she was she was dancing right up. <laughs> <laughs> it is so cool because you know you think like it, everywhere that I've gone people who are very like intelligent they always feel the need to be like very formal and very put together all the time but Mimi doesn't let her intelligence define her even though like it's one of her best like obviously it's a really good <laughs> I can't talk no, so it's, like, it's a really good trait but like she's not letting herself be put into the box of nerd she likes to socialize and she's a really good cheerleader and she does so much like she's just such a well-rounded person that she's not going to she's gonna be I don't know how to put this, but like, she's basically just gonna do whatever Mimi wants to do, and she's gonna be the best at it, and that's it. Stop! Wait, I don't wanna cry. Now. But like, the thing is, Mimi, like, okay, genuinely talking, I don't know how to describe it, but like, when you're when you're working, you're like out there and you're working. You are just <laughs> when you don't want to work, you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm really not. Like, I'm really not. <laughs> but when we're like at homecoming, it's like time to party. Like you can party. <laughs> Not like, not like no, in no, like, a, like, but like, I'm gonna, you go, can have I'm gonna fun. go do the walk. You like, can, <laughs> I'm not sitting in the corner. <laughs> Let me walk. Whoa. Yes, like a nerd would be like, most people would think like someone like, with Mimi's intelligence would just be sitting in the corner, but she's out there, I she's should. with her friends and she's just having fun. And another thing is like, you don't let, like, you don't care what other people think. Not in a bad way. I know, that's like, a good thing. Like, she went out there and, like, I would, have been a, I would have been afraid to go out there and just, like, she was she was dancing. Y'all, I felt happy watching her. I felt happy watching her. <laughs> she was, like, out there, and I was like, ooh, me and you go, go. Get it. Because I was standing in the corner. I was standing in the corner. Join me next year. I'm telling well, the thing you. is, like... Okay, you here's what I was saying. Like, people. I was afraid. I was afraid of like what people would think of me. Like, I'm not a real good yeah. dancer. Like, I might trip over so myself. Would. And so, but Mimi's out there. Like, she doesn't care. She's out there dancing. <laughs> she's out there having a fun time. And then, but then she'll turn around and then she'll be out there cheering and she'll be like getting those. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I like understand. she's out there, she's I getting understand. those cheers, and like you never would have thought that she aced her test like five minutes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, that's funny. But that's what I admire the most about Mimi is she's yeah. just whatever she wants to be, whenever she wants to be it, and she's not gonna let you tell her otherwise. Nope. <laughs> that's all. That was so good.